Welcome to Master Math Series on Financial Literacy for Teenagers. In this series, we're going to try to explain some of the financial principles that you'll need to understand to navigate your world for the rest of your life. When you come to a You Try It problem, hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to my answer. I hope you have a really good time today. I'm pretty sure that before you guys are my age, the paper check's going to be a little bit like the covered wagon. Oh yeah, I've, I've seen pictures of those. Yeah, there's all kinds of electronic tools that are taking the place of the check, and that'll keep, that'll keep going on. But the check will be around for a few more years, and all the electronic tools that take it pl its place are going to be based on the check. So if you understand the check, you'll probably better understand the tools that replace it. Now there's a couple of things you need to understand when you look at a check. There's certain numbers on this check that may not mean anything to you, but I'm going to explain them to you. The first is the check number. Each of your checks is going to be sequentially ordered. The next check in this series would be 1026. The one before it would be 1024. And that check number is also typically listed on the bottom of the check. So that lets you keep track of what check you're really looking at. And also to find it in your check register. At the bottom, on the left hand side, there's going to be a series of numbers. And they won't be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Those numbers are the bank's routing number. This is, an, this is a way that one bank can route the funds to another bank. To the right of that number is your personal bank account number. And this tells the bank what account to pull this money from. That's right, your account number is on the check which means you've got to establish an account with a bank before you're going to have checks. And that account is known as a checking account. You'll have to start that checking account with a deposit of some amount of money and then the, the bank will print you some checks and you can start paying your bills with checks. Now how do you pay a bill with a check? Well you're going to get a paper form that looks just like this. And probably the first thing you're going to want to do is fill in the date. After you fill in the date, you need to fill in the pay to the order of. This is the line where you say who should receive this money from your checking account. Next, you tell the bank how much money to give this person. And you have to write that down both as numerals and as words. $625 and no $100. You probably want to put a memo on the check to remind you later what you were paying for. And lastly, you need to sign the check. Wait a minute, did I just say the last thing you do is sign the check? Oh, someone please slap me in the face. That would be a really stupid and potentially expensive mistake. How do you know if you've got enough money in your checking account to cover that check? If you write a check for $100 and you've only got $50 in your account, the bank's going to charge you a fee, typically $35, for writing an insufficient fund check. And the people you wrote the check to could also charge you a fee for the inconvenience you've created them. So, you need to definitely record that check in your check register. Now, a check register is a journal in which you keep a record, a running record, of how much money you've got in your checking account. It's got a column for the check number. It'll have a column for the date. It'll have a column for the description 
of the transaction. In that column, you're going to list who you wrote the check to, and you may put a note in there about what it's for. That'll help remind you later what this check was all about. Then you got a column that's usually labeled payments or debits. And there's going to be a negative sign there, usually. That's where you'd list any money that was coming out of your checking account, like a check that you wrote. There may be a column for fees, and in that column, you'd put in any fees that the bank charged you for using their services. There'll be another column called deposits or credits, and it's a positive column because you're adding money to your checking account. You'll put it in that column. This column is money that's coming out of your checking account. This column's money that's going into your checking account. This is also going out of your checking account. Now, usually the last column is called balance, and in the balance column, you're going to list what your current balance in that account is, how much money you have in that account after the last deposit or withdrawal that you made. So let's see how this works. You got a brand new checking account and on day one you deposit your paycheck which was $1,500. You make an entry under deposits or credits of $1,500 and you had no money in the account before so your balance is $1,500. Now, a couple days later, you write your first check, and you list the check number. It's check number 101, and it's to pay Landlord Larry or Landlord Lenny for your rent. Your rent's $625, and now you got to subtract $625 from $1,500 so you can find out what your new balance is. And the difference is $875. So you've now got $875 in your checking account. On the 14th of December, you go to an automatic teller machine and withdraw $50 so you can go to the movies. You enter that $50 in the payments or debit column, but you also need to enter in any fees that your bank charges you for an ATM uh, withdrawal. Now, you need to subtract both $2 and $50, or $52, from your previous balance, and you ended up with $823 in your checking account. A debit card is really just an electronic check. When you use a debit card to pay for something, the bank's going to immediately pull money out of your checking account to pay the merchant. That's different from a credit card. When you use a credit card, the bank's paying the merchant with the bank's money, and then at the end of the month, they're going to send you a statement showing how much money they lent you to pay off uh, the things that you use your credit card to buy and ask you to pay the bank back. A debit card's like a checking account, except there's less paper, and that could be a problem. If you don't have your check register with you, how will you know if you've got enough money uh, to cover this debit uh, card use, or how will you keep track of how much money you've got left after you use the debit card? Well, the banks figured that one out for you. First of all, if you don't have sufficient funds in your checking account, they're not going to give you money from your debit card. And secondly, when you use the debit card, they're going to print a receipt. And you can take that receipt home with you and later make an entry into your check register so you know how much money you've got left in your check, uh, checking account. Now, the, the, like a paper check, a paper check register is probably a dinosaur and it will probably be replaced and is being replaced by electronic devices like phone apps that work exactly like a check registry. Now when you get ready to open a checking account, there are some things you're going to need to think about. First of all, ask yourself this question. Is the bank doing this service for you? Are they providing you with checks just because they're great guys and want to make your life easier? No, that, that's not the case. The banks are doing this because the banks are trying to make some money. 
They need to make a profit. They need to charge you fees. And you need to understand those fees. You need to understand what fees are associated with the various checking accounts that you're considering buying, and then you need to figure out which one makes the most sense for you. There's all kinds of fees that the banks can charge you. They can charge you a minimum balance fee. If your balance goes below a certain level in your checking account, in other words, if you have less than a certain amount of money in your checking account, they can charge you a fee. Most banks charge an ATM fee. When you use an ATM or a debit card to get some cash out of an ATM machine, they're going to charge you a fee for that. Some banks may give you interest on the money in your checking account, and that would be like a reverse fee or a negative fee. If you've got a certain amount of money in your savings account, the bank may pay you interest on that. But here's the big one, overdraft fees. If you write a check and you don't have sufficient money in your checking account, the bank's going to charge you a fee for that called an overdraft fee. And those can be pretty expensive. And, but they're going to vary by bank. And also they're going to vary by account. And also there may be some form of overdraft protection that that bank can offer you to prevent overdraft fees. Try this one. Hit your pause button, solve the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. Well, this is a, like an algebra word problem, isn't it? Gee, amazing how algebra actually may be helpful in your life. In this case, there's two checking accounts that you can pick between. One is basic checking, and with basic checking, there's a $10 monthly fee, but they charge you $0.75 cents every time that you make a withdrawal from the ATM machine. With special checking, they charge you more each month, $15 a month, but they don't charge you anything for the ATM withdrawals. Now, which would make more sense for you? Which would actually end up costing you um, more money and which would cost you less money? Well, first, you probably have to figure out how many times a month am I going to use the ATM machine to get withdrawals. And you may think, well, I'm, I'm going to use the ATM machine once a week, four times a month. Now, would four times a month make the basic checking more expensive than the special checking? Well, let's set up an algebraic expression and figure that out. On the left side of the expression, we've got the basic checking, which is... $10 a month plus 75 cents times X, X being the number of ATM withdrawals. And we're going to try to figure out when that equals $15. How many ATM withdrawals do we have to make before the cost of basic checking equals the cost of special checking? Well, first we'll subtract $10 from both sides of the equation. And then we'll divide both sides of the equation by 75 cents. And we'll come up with x equals 6.7 withdrawals. If you made six withdrawals a month, then the basic checking is going to be less expensive than the special checking. If you made seven or more withdrawals a month, then the special checking is going to be a better deal. I hope you don't get lazy and forget to make entries into your registry every time you write a check or use an ATM card, because if you do, you would stand a reasonably good chance of uh, uh, overspending the amount of money in your checking account and getting slapped with some pretty vicious uh, insufficient funds fees. So don't make this mistake. Now let's fill in the blanks so that this guy finds out how much money he's really got. You're going to start with the uh, initial balance of 1248, and everything in this column we're going to subtract from that, and everything in this column we're going to subtract from that, and everything in this column we're going to add to that initial balance. So first we'll subtract 
Then we'll subtract 145. And then 575. And then $100.75. And then $265. And before making that last paycheck deposit on April 1st, we had $91.56 in the account. Had we written another check or used an ATM machine to get $100 at that point, we'd have been in big trouble. The last entry is the paycheck on April 1st of $1,168.43. And I'm going to add that $1,168.43 to the previous balance of $91.56. And I'll end up with $1,259.99 in my checking account. Well, that's our lesson on checking accounts, and I hope you understand them better now. Let's see how well you understand them. Go to www.mastermath.info, where you'll find a whole bunch of quizzes, tests, uh, cool links, exams, all kinds of stuff to test your knowledge of checking accounts. I hope you had a good time. I hope you come back again soon. See you later.